Hola, ¿cómo están? Bienvenidos a una nueva viola de colección. El 24 de noviembre pasado se cumplieron 20 años de la muerte de Freddie Mercury. Por eso viajamos primero a Zanzíbar, una isla en África, hoy perteneciente a Tanzania. Allí nació con el nombre de Farouk Bulsara. Después nos fuimos a Londres para entender cómo Farouk Bulsara se fue transformando. Primero en Freddy Bulsara y más tarde en Freddy Mercury. La historia increíble de Freddy Mercury o Farouk Bulsara que comienza en Zanzíbar y termina en Londres. A 20 años de la muerte de Freddy, Freddy todavía reina. Fue vértigo, impostura, improvisación y talento. Fue una rebeldía distinta, exótica, amable y desafiante. Desde sus orígenes en una remota isla de África hasta el lujo de Londres. Desde su bautismo como Farouk Bulsara hasta su tumba como Freddie Mercury. Así fue la vida del hombre que se convirtió en la voz de la reina. Hace días que estamos viajando. Llegamos a Dar as Salam en Tanzania, en el este africano, y desde ahí vamos a tomar otro avión para aterrizar en la isla donde empezó todo. Estamos llegando a la isla de Zanzíbar, el lugar donde nació Freddie Mercury, que queda a media hora de avión de Dar as Alam. Hoy esa isla pertenece a Tanzania. Zanzíbar es una isla al este de África. Tiene poco más de un millón de habitantes. Primero fue un protectorado inglés, luego pasó a ser parte de Tanganica y actualmente pertenece a Tanzania. Se la conoce como la isla de las especias, por la cantidad de producción que hay de las mismas. También el turismo es muy importante para su economía por sus hermosas playas. Why the people in Zanzibar doesn't uh, do anything to remind Freddie Mercury? I mean, there's no museums, no statues. And I think it's a pity, like we don't celebrate. Um, this is the son of Zanzibar. It doesn't matter whether he's white or black or gay or straight. We celebrate the achievement. He is the only Zanzibari who put Zanzibar in an international map, especially when it comes to music. Mama, life
El 5 de septiembre de 1946, Freddie Mercury nació con otro nombre en un lugar que hoy lo ignora. Here we are in the hospital where Freddie was born. Uh -huh. His father um, worked in the government. All the government employee, they, came, they, they had a wing, like this wing. It was for the government. Of members of the public, they go to the main hospital. But this is only, it's almost, it was almost like the VIP. It started off so well Said we made a perfect pair Nadie imaginaba en esa época que un bebé nacido en este hospital iba a transformarse en Freddie Mercury, una de las figuras más grandes en la historia del rock. Yeah, a baby this, born here yeah, conquered the world. the world. It's not strange, but he didn't conquer Zanzibar. <laughs> And his father came here to San Sivar, why? He worked well, for the British. Yeah, he worked for the British. Here in the post office. In the post office, he worked for the colonial, colonial office. Yes. And of course, in those days, um, I think some set of Indians had a problem living in India. And Zanzibar, um, I think, offered more opportunity. Yeah, this is Mercury House, but it's not his, his house. But this is the house, the name is to attract business with tourism. Esta es la Zanzibar Gallery, también conocida como la Mercury's House. Es la única mención que hay sobre Freddy aquí en Zanzibar. Muchos piensan que por llamarse la Mercury's House fue donde él nació y vivió los primeros años de su vida pero es simplemente una tienda. La verdadera casa original de Freddie Mercury o Farouk Bursala queda en esta misma calle, pero a 200 metros. So you believe that Freddie's house was yeah, here? Because Tell the house is um, it's number 189, this is 187. So 189 must have been here. Don't stop me now. Don't stop me. Cause I'm having a good time. Having a good time. So now we are reaching to Freddy's school. Before revolution, it was schools only for um, white people and Goans and Indians. Africans were not allowed. What kind of education did Freddie had here? Of in course, this it was an English. It was a colonial time, so everything was in English. So it's incredible. Freddie lived there. two blocks from here. He the came walking to the school, right? And his father worked was the post office. Right. In those days, um, you don't walk alone. You don't walk alone. The servant will bring you here, and the servant will come and fetch you and take you back home. You didn't walk alone in those days. You had to have an escort, not because of security reason. It's just because. It was prestigious. En 1954, a los ocho años, Farouk Bulsara deja Zanzibar por primera vez para ir a estudiar a un internado en Bombay, la India. Allí toca el piano en una banda llamada The Hectics. Luego, en 1962, cuando termina la escuela, regresa aquí a Zanzibar ya demostrando grandes aptitudes para el arte. Era amante de las revistas de moda y de la música pop. 
ya no era más Farouk Bulsara. Todos lo conocían como Freddy. But what I'm surprised about is um, himself, Freddy himself. He has never mentioned like he was from Zanzibar. The Why do you think that? Um, I think he wanted to become mysterious. So people don't know, is he Arab, is he Indian, is he white? Bismillah, no, we will not let you go. Let him go. The only, re the only way I actually realize this man he is not... Um, English, he's not West from the West, is when he did Bohemian Rhapsody, because in, in, in that part of a song, there is Bismillah. Bismillah, we will not let you go, let me go, we will not let you go, let me go, let me go. Bismillah, Bismillah, as an Islamic, when you start something, like when you want to start eating, you say Bismillah. Bismillah. When, yeah. And when he, when I heard this, I knew um, something about this man. He is not English. He's not American. He's not European. He's got to be from where I come from. Después de estudiar varios años en Bombay, la India, Freddy Bulsara volvió aquí a su ciudad natal, a Zanzíbar. Pero a los 17 años tuvo que emigrar por un problema de seguridad. Se desató aquí una revolución sangrienta y los Bulsara emigraron todos juntos a Londres. Allí comenzó la otra historia, la de Freddy, que en pocos años más sería Mercury. I just keep losing my beat. You just keep losing, I'm losing. I'm alright. He's alright. He's alright. Yeah, yeah. I just gotta get out of this prison cell. One day I'm gonna be free. How can you explain that here in San Siba, Freddie Mercury isn't so famous, so big, and he was born here? He never came to San Siba. Had he made even one visit, and he had one performance, it would have gone to the ears of every... Uh, and he would have become a favorite, uh, people's favorite here. But he never came back? He never came back. Somebody to love. Dejamos Zanzíbar, la isla que lo vio nacer, pero nunca lo vio volver. Vamos para Londres, la cuna del mito. Freddy nació en Zanzíbar, una isla al este de África, hoy territorio de Tanzania. Hijo de padres indios, su verdadero nombre fue Farouk Bulsara. Su niñez la pasó entre la isla y Bombay, a donde fue a estudiar. 
hasta que cuando tenía 17 años se mudó definitivamente a Londres para empezar a construir uno de los símbolos más grandes de la música del siglo XX. I'm not afraid to speak out and say things that I want to do or, or do the things that I want to do. So um, I think in the end being natural and being being actually genuine is is, is what wins. A principios de la década del 60 en Zanzíbar se desató una sangrienta revolución. Fue por eso que la familia Bulsara decidió mudarse a Londres, a este barrio de inmigrantes en el oeste de la ciudad llamado Feltham. En esta casa, en Gladstone al 22, vivieron Freddy, sus padres y su hermana los primeros años en la capital inglesa. When he moved here with 17 years, He wasn't Freddie Mercury yet. No, he was Freddie, but he was Freddie Bulsara. He hadn't yet discovered his Mercury surname. The thing that they moved to this part of London showed that the Bulsara family had money. Well, they were, they're immigrants, and this is a traditional area for immigrants of um, Asian background to come. That's probably why they came here. El primer lugar que cobijó al Fred Inglés está habitado. Ahí vive hoy Irina. Actually it was so impressed for us when we moved in here and it was still amazing so we just walk around and we tied the the door you know it's where the Mercury was living in here it was really interesting people would come in and make the pictures and some of the women just asked oh please can I come inside because it was really really impressed the heart from me all my life, yeah. When I used to be a little boy um, around here, yeah, and I used to see Freddie Mercury, um, he was about 20 years older than me. And how was Freddie those days? Do you remember he, he, he was... He was a quiet man, he was a quiet man, but he was a nice people, real nice, and his mum and dad, beautiful. He'd have had friends at, uh, friends at college, friends at the Polytechnic, at the school that he went to. Um, interestingly, even though Brian May lived very close, he, I don't think he knew Brian May at this stage, which is... But he was very know, close from here. A number of streets away, yes, yes hmm. same suburb. She keeps him away, Shonda, in a pretty cabinet, let them eat cake, she says, just like Marie Antoinette, a building a remedy for Chris Job and Kennedy, and at a time of invitation you can't take it. Cuando Freddie Mercury se vino a vivir con su familia a Londres, al barrio de Feltham, vino a esta universidad conocida hoy como The West London University, pero en aquellas épocas se llamaba The Ealing College. You go to the same university that Freddie Mercury went when he studied here. That means something to you? Yeah, it's, 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 
it's really big, yeah. I mean, um, it's kind of a, I mean, it's, it's a historic place. What are you studying here? Uh, we're doing music, so that's obviously a massive inspiration. Aquí se recibió de diseñador gráfico y conoció a Tim Stafford, que le presentó a la banda Smile, el origen de Queen, ya que allí tocaban Brian May y Roger Taylor. En este lugar fue donde Freddie Mercury se encontró por primera vez con la bohemia inglesa y a partir de allí decidió venirse a vivir cerca del centro de Londres. He studies in England, he studies art in England, he joins bands in England, he gets into his music in England, and he gets into the, the whole rock music scene here. And London remains a, an important city in his life. En 1971, siete años después de haber llegado a Inglaterra, Freddy formó Queen junto a Brian May, Roger Taylor y John Deacon. Los primeros años no fueron de éxito fácil. Their first uh, album was not critically uh, welcomed, acclaimed. You know, a lot of people thought the band a little pretentious. What broke the band really was Bohemian Rhapsody. And, and that particular album took them from being a run-of-the-mill rock band to suddenly becoming one of the greats. Mama, she's killed a man But a god against his own Pulled my trigger, now he's dead Mama, life had just begun El disco se llamó Una noche en la ópera. Se editó en 1975. A partir de ahí, el grupo empezó a convertirse en lo que finalmente sería y Freddy, al mismo tiempo, comenzó a transformarse en uno de los personajes más talentosos e intrigantes. Rock music in London in the 70s already had some great stars, but Freddie Mercury was somebody really special, quite different, mm. uh, mainly because he had this very flamboyant personality. At the same time, he had a tremendous skill and intelligence and talent for writing brilliant songs. Bicycle, bicycle, bicycle. I want to ride my bicycle, bicycle, bicycle. I want to ride my bicycle. I want to ride my bike. I want to ride my bicycle. I want to ride it where I like. Well, he, his attitude on stage was the same attitude he had in life. And I went to meet Freddy for the first time, and I saw him on stage, and he looked like a demon. You know, he was jumping about. Um, terrifying the audience really with this sort of kind of very aggressive style and uh, manner, mannerisms. And uh, he actually, when I met him in the bar of the hotel the next day, he was very quiet, pleasant, and polite, and mm. uh, a gentleman really. Love of my life, you've hurt me, you've broken my heart, and now you leave me. Love of my life, can't you see? Bring it back, bring it back Don't take it away from me Because you don't know what it means to me Aquí en Londres en 1970, Freddie Mercury conoció a uno de los grandes amores de su vida, Mary Austin. La relación duró seis años porque Freddie comenzó a salir con un directivo de una compañía discográfica. Sin embargo, Mary 
fue la gran confidente y amiga de Freddy durante toda su vida. Una muestra fehaciente de esa relación fue la canción Love of My Life, que Freddy le escribió a Mary a mediados de los 70. Love of my life, don't leave me. You've stolen my love, you know, Jesus. Love of my life, can't you see? Bring it back, bring it back. Don't take it away from me because you don't know what it means to me. How can you explain that after they broke, uh, she still uh, keep in touch with him? How can one explain it? Yeah. Well, I, love transcends all. She was obviously very fond of Freddie, and Freddie obviously very fond of her. And he wrote Love of My Life. Indeed, for Mary Austin, yes. To him. Love, to love of My Life, yes, so. You will remember when this is blown over and everything's all When I grow older, I will be there at your side to remind you how I still love you. I still love you. Uh, she was a constant throughout that whole period of him moving from being an unknown to being the, the iconic star that he became. En este estadio, el mítico Wembley, el 12 de julio de 1986, en el mejor momento de su carrera, Queen dio para muchos el mejor show de su historia. Otros arriesgan y aseguran que fue uno de los mejores shows en la historia del rock. Fue uno de los últimos grandes hitos de Queen y de Freddy. Well, the amazing thing about Queen is it has left this kind of legacy of uh, influence on other bands and young artists coming up today, I think. Uh, they set such high standards and such original songs. And also, a very great pride in their music. Freddie Mercury was saying is go out, be yourself, say it like it is and I think that's uh, really kind of inspired lots of young artists to, to follow in their footsteps. En Zanzíbar, una remota isla de Tanzania, nació Farouk Bulsara. Musulmán, de padres indios, salió decidido a conquistar el mundo.
Empezó por Londres y muy poco después, bajo el nombre de Freddie Mercury, tendría al planeta del rock bajo sus pies. En marzo de 1981, en la cumbre de su éxito, Queen llegó a la Argentina. Argentina! ¿Qué tal? ¿Cómo bien? Diego Maradona fue el encargado de saludar a Freddy y a la banda en los vestuarios de la cancha de Vélez. Quiero agradecer a, a Freddy y a los Queen por hacernos tan feliz. Y ahora otro amor del polvo. Por entonces, el carisma del cantante ya le había ganado a las provocaciones y cautivaba a todos. sings lyrics with meaning and he, he injects meaning into them. He brings a lyric alive. He's a, he's a poet in song. I pay my dues, time after time, I've took my sentence, but committed no crime, and bad mistakes, and I've made a few. El sonido operístico y sofisticado de los primeros discos se había simplificado y convertido en una música más simple, bailable y popular. I want to break free. El último show de Queen fue en 1986 en la ciudad inglesa de Stevenage, ante 100.000 personas. Después de eso, Freddie Mercury se tomó un descanso de la banda y grabó su primer disco solista. Hello, my name is Freddie Mercury and this is my latest recording, The Great Pretender. Oh, yes, I'm the great pretender. Ooh, adrift in a world of my own. Ooh, I play the game, but to my real shame, you've Most of the stuff I do is pretending, it's like acting, you know, so you go on stage and I pretend to be a macho man and, and all that. A Freddie Mercury le diagnosticaron SIDA a mediados de 1987. Aunque él lo negara públicamente, las especulaciones de la prensa crecían. Los rumores se acrecentaban al ver el deterioro físico de Freddie y el hecho de que Queen no saliera de gira. AIDS had crept up like a terrible scourge and there was affecting lots of people in the music industry, but nobody wanted to talk about it because obviously it would upset their fans, it would damage their business, their life, their career, and it was something so awful nobody really wanted to boast about it or discuss it. There's no chance for us.
1987 graba la canción Barcelona con la soprano Montserrat Caballé. De hecho, esa fue la canción oficial de las Olimpiadas en Barcelona 1992. Pero Freddy nunca llegaría a escucharla ahí. Él me dijo inmediatamente al principio de la grabación, el año 87, que era positivo y que quería que yo lo supiera. Y yo le dije que yo había superado todos estos temas. Pero él, él me dijo que, en fin, que quería que lo recordara eh, en sus mejores momentos. El 22 de noviembre de 1991, con su manager, deciden hacer pública una carta al día siguiente reconociendo que Freddy tenía sida. Fue una conmoción mundial. You know what, how did he live the last days of his life? No, Freddy was a guy who I think um, was certainly not going to give up uh, lightly. And I think this is shown by the fact that even when he knows he's poorly, uh, and the end is obviously in sight. I mean, he's still there working in the studio, and and he's singing songs like "The Show Must Go On." Um, this, I think, sort of encapsulates Freddie's attitude to life and attitude to his own own death. Empty spaces. What are we living for? Abandoned places. I guess we know this door on and on. Does anybody know what we are looking for? This was Freddie Mercury's last home, where unfortunately he he died 20 years ago. And why it's uh, so tall the, the 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 walls? Because this is a shrine for fans from all over the world who come here. And unfortunately, some perhaps didn't respect the privacy of Mary Austin, who now lives here. So she put this fence up to hold them out. So Mary Austin is still living here? Oh, very much so, yes, yes. Mm. Freddie left her this in his will. She nursed Freddie until his eventual death. El 24 de noviembre de 1991, Freddie Mercury moría en esta casa. Días antes le había confesado al mundo, mediante una carta, que tenía sida. La causa oficial de la muerte fue bronconeumonía. Only one day after he announced he was suffering from AIDS, rock and roll singer Freddie Mercury is dead. 45-year-old Freddie Mercury died. At the West London home of Freddie Mercury this morning, fans paid tribute to that hero. Fue cremado y nadie sabe realmente qué pasó con sus cenizas. Muchos aseguran que fueron esparcidas en esta casa. El día de hoy vive todavía aquí 
la mujer de su vida, Mary Austin. It started off so well. He said we made a perfect bed. I clothed myself in your glory and to love. How I loved you. How I cried. Do you think he was a happy, a happy person in life? Or he suffered? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I think probably he, he suffered on certain levels. He must have suffered originally from being an immigrant in a new country. He must have suffered, well we know he suffered a little bit by his looks, by his teeth. That gave him a bit of a problem early on in his life. He must also have suffered with his homosexuality, his gayness, before it was really accepted and coming out. He must have suffered, obviously, physically later when he knew he had the disease and life was uncertain. But uh, I say his victory is that that suffering was never transmitted outside his persona. It was something he kept within him. If I had to do it all over again, yes, why not? Why not? I do it slightly differently. De Zanzibar a Londres, hizo lo que quiso y lo hizo bien. Behind the theatrical mask, that's the that's a true performer. That everybody thinks they know Freddie Mercury, but in truth, nobody really knows Freddie Mercury. Like all good actors. Fue Farouk, fue Freddie, fue un misterio y todavía reina.
Freddie Mercury, otro grande que se fue muy joven, pero dejó un legado musical impresionante. Llama mucho la atención cómo apenas algunas horas después de haber reconocido públicamente que tenía SIDA, Freddy muere allí en Londres. Para nosotros fue una emoción y espero que ustedes hayan podido sentir algo de esa emoción que uno vive cuando está en los lugares que Freddy vivió de muy chiquito, apenas nació los primeros años en San Sibar y después en los años de su coronación en Londres. La semana que viene un informe muy especial porque falta muy poco para que llegue a la Argentina el hombre récord, Roger Waters, a hacer sus nueve rivers. Roger Waters va a estar tocando todo el disco de Wall, que es una obra conceptual de Pink Floyd que marcó un antes y un después. Estuvimos en Cambridge para ver los orígenes de la banda británica, después en Londres, donde también hay muchos guiños de esta obra inspirada en muchas partes de la vida de Roger Waters y también algún que otro Pink Floyd. Por eso la semana que viene, The Wall, aquí en la Dio de la Colección. Chau, hasta la próxima. Leave them kids alone